Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this one, we are going to look at a very interesting phenomenon, which is called the infectious inheritance. Now, we all know about the Mendelian inheritance, right? The Mendelian crosses, the ratios, the, the amount of offspring that we're going to get, we all know about that. Now, that is the part of the classical genetics. Now, this infectious inheritance is a bit different from that because it is categorized under something called the extra nuclear inheritance. Now, this extra nuclear inheritance, this does not follow the Mendelian inheritance laws. So, this is a little bit different, and infectious inheritance is one of the phenomena of the extra nuclear inheritance. Now, we're going to take an example of the uh, organism paramecium paramecium aurelia so we're going to take the example of this organism and we're going to uh, elaborate the infectious inheritance and how it works basically infectious inheritance this is a parasitic association a parasite that is inside a host so it is a parasitic association of a microorganism of a microbe um, which results which results which results in transmission of a phenotype in the offspring so this is parasitic association this this parasitic association uh, it sort of uh, transmits the phenotype of the infectious phenotype onto the offspring of the host so the phenotype of the offspring of the host so a parasite Let's say this is the organism. A parasite is residing inside the organism. And when the host, when the host reproduces and makes a copy of itself, this parasitic organism, um, it transmits some phenotype onto the uh, progeny that sort of makes the host into a particular phenotype so this is the overview of the infectious inheritance now in paramecium aurelia there is something called the killer phenomenon the killer phenomenon now what is this killer phenomenon first the paramecium aurelia this organism paramecium aurelia it secretes a toxin called paramecine. Now, this paramecine, when the scientists looked into it, this paramecine, it can kill the paramecium, the paramecium species, in its vicinity. So let's say this is the paramecium and these are some of the paramecium in its vicinity. Now this paramecium is secreting the toxin that is the paramecine and this toxin it is killing some of the paramecine, paramecium in its vicinity. So this was the phenomenon that the scientists observed primarily. Now when they looked into it in a much more detailed manner what they found out that the paramecium that was secreting the paramecium let's say this is the nucleus of the paramecium and the paramecium that is secreting the paramecine it is having certain particles inside its I mean in its cytoplasm so these particles are basically secreting the toxin which is killing the paramecium in its vicinity now, when they further took these particles and examined, they found out that 
these particles are nothing but a bacteria now these bacteria are residing inside the paramecium as endosymbionts that is they are using the paramecium as a host and they are deriving nutrients from the host the name of the bacteria is Cedobacter, or I think it's CD bacter. CD bacter Tino spiralis. So this is the bacteria that is residing inside the paramecium, and this bacteria is secreting the paramecium the toxin that is killing the paramecium in its vicinity. Now, this paramecine, this paramecine that is being secreted, it is killing only those paramecium. It is killing only those paramecium which are not having the bacterial endosymbiont. So this was a peculiar thing. The paramecin that the bacteria Cedobacter uh, tineospiralis is secreting, it is killing only those paramecium which are not having the uh, bacterial endosymbiont within themselves. That is, if a paramecium is having the Cetobacter inside it, then the toxin which is being secreted, it can't kill this, bacteria, this paramecium. But the, the paramecium that is not having the, um, the Cetobacter species inside it, it will kill that paramecium. So, this Cetobacter tineospiralis, this is basically giving the paramecium inside which it is residing a protection against the toxin paramecium. So that was one of the observations. Now, another observation that was made was um, there is a gene in the nucleus of the paramecium Let's say this is the nucleus of the paramecium and the nucleus is having the genome of the paramecium. So there is a gene in the nuclear DNA of the paramecium. Let's say this is the gene. Now this gene is basically maintaining, maintaining the bacteria. All right, so the bacteria or the particles that the scientists discovered, I forgot to tell about that, bacteria was named the kappa particle or the killer particle. So this kappa particle, this was being maintained by a gene in the nucleus of, in the genomic material inside the nucleus of the paramecium. Now, this gene was called the K gene. Now, if the paramecium is having two K genes in its dominant form, that is, it is a homozygous dominant for the K gene, then this can maintain, this can maintain the kappa particle and is a killer right now if the paramecium is having the k gene in its heterozygous form then also it can maintain the copper particle and that paramecium it's going to be a killer paramecium but if a paramecium is having a homozygous recessive condition for the k gene then this cannot maintain this cannot maintain the copper particle and this is sensitive 
to paramecine. And these two, these two, they are resistant to paramecine. So if the bacteria or if the paramecium, let's say this is the paramecium, it is having the casein in homozygous dominant condition inside the nucleus is having the casein in homozygous dominant condition then it can maintain the copper particles inside the uh, i mean in the cytoplasm and this can secrete the paramecine the toxin and that can kill the paramecium in its vicinity if they're not containing the copper particle similarly if instead of the homozygous dominant condition if the condition is heterozygous then also it can secrete it can maintain the copper particles or the killer bodies and that can secrete the toxin and that will be the killer phenotype now how is this killer phenotype being inherited onto the progeny so let's say this is this is a paramecium that is having let's write it over here it's having the it's having the genotype uh, i mean the uh, casein as homozygous dominant so it is going to have the copper particles maintained in the cytoplasm right and let's say we have another another paramecium that is having in that is not having the capital k gene and it is having the uh, mutated version of the um, k gene that is in its homozygous recessive and it cannot maintain the copper particles that is why it is not having the copper particles inside the cytoplasm let's say they have horizontal gene transfer by the aid of conjugation this can happen right they can have conjugation uh, and the genetic transfer can occur now this this paramecium whether it is going to be a killer after the conjugation ends depends on the timing of the conjugation if the conjugation tube if the conjugation lasts for a long period of time let's say uh, if it is lasting for a long period of time long time then the genetic material it is going to be exchanged that is for sure but along with that some of the cytoplasmic content is also going to be exchanged so now after the conjugation this is going to have the copper particles and since the genetic material is being exchanged it is going to get the capital k from this uh, this paramecium now let's say it is not having the conjugation for a long time it is having for a short time then what happens only genetic material is exchanged genetic material exchanged now if the genetic material is exchanged what happens this uh, this paramecium let's show it once more over here this paramecium is going to get the k gene that is the capital k gene and it is not going to have the cytoplasmic content exchange that is why although it is having the capital k gene it is not having the copper particles so this paramecium now if it is for a short time conjugation this paramecium is a potential killer a potential killer because it is having the k gene in its dominant form or in heterozygous form but it is not having the copper particles uh, because the cytoplasmic con content did not exchange so that is why if the long time conjugation persists the cytoplasmic content is going to be exchanged 
and it is going to have the copper particles. This is going to turn this paramecium into a killer. And if only the genetic material is exchanged and not the cytoplasmic content, then the copper particles are not being exchanged and not being transferred into the other paramecium and this is not going to be a killer rather we're going to call it a potential killer but it is although it is a potential killer since it is not having the copper particles it won't have the protection against paramecine and it is going to be sensitive to paramecine so this is very important although it is a potential killer because it is having the capital K gene but since it is not having the uh, copper particles it is not having the copper particles in its cytoplasm it is going to be sensitive to paramecine because the copper particles are the organisms that are providing the protection against paramecine and since it is not having it it won't be resistant so that is how the infectious inheritance occurs in paramecium aurelia and we can find the bacteria Cetobacter tenospiralis and which secretes the paramecine and makes the killer phenomenon possible for paramecium aurelia. So that's it for this video. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and share with someone who would need to watch it. Until the next time.